Jesus stressed the need for planning in our lives and he insisted that we do it even in our decision to follow him. Luke 14 verse 27. If anyone does not carry his cross and follow me, he cannot what? Be my disciple. Verse 28. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower, he says, and will he not first sit down and estimate the cost of it and see if he can finish it? I don't have enough money to complete it. Jesus said that. Verse 29. For if he lays the foundation not able to finish it, and everyone who see him will ridicule him and laugh at him. Verse 33, in the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. In other words, if you're going to do something, sit down and plan. The ability to document the future is faith. To capture that which exists but cannot be seen is planning. God is a God of faith. We talked about that. Faith is belief in God's promises. Faith is conviction about the future. Faith is being certain of what we do not physically see. Faith demands a plan. 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 I'm not convinced that you are serious about living until I see your plan. Amen. Christians are lazy people, drifting along in life. I was one of them. But I found out something about God. God does not plan for you. <laughs> God has a plan for you, but he doesn't plan for you. <laughs> Planning is the highest expression of faith in God. Write that down, Brother Randy. Preach that 500 times, because we got to get that one in the church. Planning is the highest expression of faith. If God tells you to do something, if you don't document it and plan to do it, you don't believe it. If you believe something, then you plan for it. <laughs> Planning is the act of capturing God's will for your life. Capturing it. Planning gives definition to faith. Planning pulls the promises out of eternity into time. There's stuff I got on paper that only me and God believes. <laughs> but it's on paper. And what have I done? I copied it and gave it to thousands of people. Now they believe. And everything that was just in my heart is now in their hearts and it's coming into being. Planning pulls the promises out of eternity and puts them into time. Planning documents vision. Planning documents vision. Planning documents vision. I'm not impressed by how great your vision is. Let me see the plan. Without a plan, life has no definition. Without a plan, life has no meaning. Without a vision, the people perish, the Bible says. A plan is a captured vision. Without a vision, there is no self-control. Without a plan, there is no goal control. Therefore, Understand that faith is expressed in planning. Therefore, planning is faith. The Bible says, but we know that faith without works is what? Dead. So the reason why many plans do not come to pass is because many people do not follow through on the works. In essence, planning without works is failure. God is the greatest example of a planner of faith. Planning and working with God is a natural. 
First of all, God conceived the plan of redemption. Ephesians 1.4, before the foundation of the world. Then he documented his plan, his vision. He wrote it in the Bible. Then God worked out his plan and still working it out, he sent his son. And Jesus Christ was pronounced and announced for 5,000 years. God is a planner. It is important to note that God's purposes created his plans and his plans produced his work. And he worked his plan and his purpose was fulfilled. If your plans for last year failed or were not realized, imitate God. What did God do when his plans failed? He made new plans. Write this down. If you cannot change a plan, if, 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 rather, if you do not have a plan, you cannot change a plan. God will never change his purpose, but he can change his plans. Plans are changeable, but never your purpose. God didn't panic when man fell. He just had another plan. Not fulfilling your plan or failing to fulfill your plan does not mean that you are out of God's will. I want to repeat this because a lot of people think, well, if it ain't working, then it ain't God. That's not true. God is telling us, if you keep your purpose clear, your plans might change. But don't be afraid to change your plans. Just keep your purpose and make it permanent. I will accomplish this thing, even though my plans have changed. You know, I've heard people say, well, I'm divorced now. Things ain't going to work out anymore. That's not true. Just make another plan. Marry a better person. God bless you. <laughs> Failure is an opportunity, they say, to start again. Don't quit until you win because you only lose when you quit. Jesus stressed the need for planning in our lives and he insisted that we do it even in our decision to follow him. Luke 14 verse 27. If anyone does not carry his cross and follow me, he cannot what? Be my disciple. Verse 28, suppose one of you wants to build a tower, he says, and will he not first sit down and estimate the cost of it and see if he can finish it and have enough money to complete it? Jesus said that. Verse 29, for if he lays the foundation not able to finish it, and everyone who see him will ridicule him and laugh at him. Verse 33, in the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. In other words, if you're going to do something, sit down and plan. Thus we must sit, he said first. Most people don't sit. We spend no time on our dreams, no time on our vision. We're too busy making a living to find life. Turn the TV off, spend three hours tonight with a blank piece of paper and say, God, I'm going to sit down and work out a 15-year plan for my life according to the vision in my heart. It takes sitting down to do that. And the first word Jesus said is, first sit down. That's tough to do. Then he says, estimate. It's okay to estimate. How long is it going to take for me to do this? What do I have to accomplish to get this done? How much studies do I need to do to get this? What kind of, of uh, information I need to get this done? You got to estimate what you need if you're going to be a successful visionary. Then he says, you must plan to give up all for the plan. That means you must go after it with all your heart and everything you have. Be willing to die for what you're living for. And then he says, <laughs> the mark of a good successful disciple is one who works his plan and then dies for his plan. The first place in scripture planning is mentioned is by God himself. It's found in Genesis 11 verse 6. And the Lord said, if one of these, rather, if this one people speaking the same thing, if they begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible. And he was talking about, you know, the Tower of Babel. If people plan to do something, God says, and they committed to it, nothing can stop them. And that was so dangerous, God himself had to get up and come down, and he had to stop the project. It stresses their doing the planning. They planned it, and God got concerned. <laughs> when man plans something it makes heaven tremble planning secondly is mentioned by Pharaoh 
to Joseph. Genesis 41 verse 37. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all of his officials. And the people who planned to be promoted and lifted up because it shows their spirit of self-discipline and precision living, they'll always be promoted. I found out something. Joseph had a plan for Pharaoh. That's why he got promoted. If you want a job and you want to move up in your job, solve the next problem for your boss. Come up with an alternative plan to make things go better in the department. Guarantee you, they put an eye on you. Because a planner will always be promoted. I repeat it, a planner will always be promoted. Because a planner is a visionary. And a visionary is a self-motivated person. And that's the kind of person that gets promoted. Joseph planned and he was promoted. God gave Moses a clear plan for the tabernacle, didn't he? Moses came down with the tabernacle on a piece of paper, all drawn out, clear. And the Bible says, Exodus 26 verse 30, set up the tabernacle according to the plan I have shown you on the mountain. God gave Moses a plan, not a building. David states in Psalm 20 verse 4, May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans to succeed. Everybody say desire. desire. And desire is where? In your heart. David says get out your heart and your plans will succeed. God doesn't get your desires to succeed. He gets your plans to succeed. A plan is a documented desire. I hope you hear me tonight. This is very practical. When I come back next time, I want to be able to, to look at you and give me a package in my hand and say, this is it. This is the next 50 years of my life. This is what I want to do. You'll be amazed how that attracts the right people to you. How it attracts the right resources to you. Psalm 33 verse 11, the plans of the Lord stand forever and the purposes of his heart throughout all generations. Proverbs 12, 5, the plans of the righteous are right, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. God has a purpose for each of our lives. We are all conceived and born for this reason, but we must write that reason on paper. It must become a plan. I want to close on a chapter that, that really became my protection as a young man and still is today is found in Proverbs chapter 16 and tell your neighbor something's coming Proverbs chapter 16 I'd like for the ushers please to get the handout sheets and prepare to give them out for me please Proverbs chapter 16 now I want everyone to look at me what you are about to read is is God's instructions to you. This will also explain why you're not successful to the point where you would like to be right now. We're going to read verse 1 first. Verse 1. To man belongs the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the answer of the tongue. Now you sit there and you go, I don't know what he's talking about. All right, first line, to man belongs what? The plans of the heart. That means, that means that, are you getting the sheets, huh? Don't read that yet, please. Don't read it yet. Look at me. Very important to listen to what I'm saying first. To man belongs what? The plans of the heart. God is saying, the plans are your responsibility. Putting the plans on paper is your responsibility. The next line, but to God belong the answer to the, of the tongue. That means how it's going to be paid for is God's problem. Amen. It's an interesting Hebrew statement. It says here, to man belong the plans of the heart. But God will give the answer of the tongue. That means God is the one who is responsible for explaining how it's going to be accomplished. So God knows that the plan you're going to put on paper looks 
impossible. All these big things you have in your heart, God said, put them on paper, don't be afraid. God said, put the building on paper, put all those things you got in your heart, put them on paper. He says, now it looks like about three, five, maybe 20 million dollars, no problem, put it on paper. He says, how it's going to be done is none of your business. Amen. That's my responsibility, he says. To man belong the plans of the heart, but to God belongs the explanation of how it's going to be done. Isn't that relieving? Yes. So write it down. Don't be afraid of how much it costs. I beg you. Because I've been through this. I know how frightening it is. Some of you are dreaming some serious stuff. God says, put it on paper. What do you see? Let's keep coming back to you. What is that dream that won't leave you alone? What's the vision you have of the building or the, or the, or the department or that, that, that construction building? What do you have? That studio you own or that dress store or that manufacturing plan for, 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 for school clothes or I don't know what it is. What is it you're dreaming? God says, I didn't ask you for the money. I asked you for the plan. I will explain, he says, how it's going to be done. Look at verse 2. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but the motives are weighed by the Lord. When you put that plan on paper, check your motives. Is it just for you to get rich? Then it ain't from God. God's plans are always related to helping people become better. If your vision does not help humanity, it's from the devil. All of God's purposes are to fulfill God's purpose. Your motives got to be checked. Verse 3, commit to the Lord whatever you do and your what? Plans will succeed. God says, you write them down, commit them to me, whatever you do will succeed. Uh, verse 4, the Lord works out everything for his own ends. Even the wicked is involved in the system. Right. Boy, this gets me excited. God says, write your plan down. I ain't going to work with you without a plan. Now, when you get a plan, a lot of folks going to come against you. We just work them in the plan. The banker tells you no. God says, no problem. We'll work that no in. You teach the banker a lesson. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. The government policy says you can't build this here because the zoning is wrong. God, no problem. We'll work, we'll work that problem into the system. Be patient. I'm going to move the guy who's in power and change it next, week, next year. God says, I'm going to work everything, even the wicked will be a part of the process. But first you got to do what? Write the plan down. Verse 5. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. God says even though he's working with the wicked, don't make fun of them. Don't be proud in your success as he works through you. Verse 6. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. That means principles. Keep your life on target with God's laws as the plans unfold. Number seven, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to live at peace with him. Why? If you have a plan, you can't have any enemies. God will make enemies your friends. But you got to have what? Land. Oh boy. Better is a little with righteousness than much with injustice. Values. Don't do anything unjust on your way to your plan. Take your time. It's better to have a little right now. Start it off right. Don't rush it. Don't steal money. Don't sell drugs to get money. Don't get bribes to go to move ahead. He says, take it right. Move it right. Take your time. Keep your plan on schedule. 
Here's a big one. In his heart, a man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. Oh, wow. Listen to it. In his heart, the man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. For years as a Christian, I was praying for God to lead me. Just like you're doing right now. And you've been feeling God ain't leading me. I don't hear the direction of God. I don't see the direction of God. Where is God? I need God. God seems so far away. Pastor always say the Lord spoke to him. He ain't speak to me. But the man say the Lord led him. God ain't led me. These spiritual giants, oh, they always get Lord leading them. But the Lord don't lead little Christians like me. Where is God? I don't feel the presence of the Lord in my life. I don't feel no leadership of the Lord in my life. Read the verse again. The verse tells you what the problem is. The verse says, the heart of the man makes the plans. And then the Lord directs the steps of the plan. If you have no plan, God has nothing to direct. So you're praying for the last five years. Oh Lord, help me. Help you do what? I don't know, but just help me. Oh Lord, bless me. Bless you for what? Oh Lord, guide me. Where? Now this is, this is serious. God says, if you don't have any plans, I have nothing to direct. If you ain't going in no direction, I cannot steer you. If you want the Lord to lead you, attract him. Yeah. Make a plan. As a Christian and a man or woman with a vision, you've got to put a plan on paper. Now, we already heard today, only about 30% are going to get it. <laughs> So I don't expect any more out of you 30% people. Then there's a the 60% people. Some of you are going to do it 60%, you're going to quit. But I got a dream for those 100%. Yes. I believe that some of you heard this word, a very practical word tonight. If you want God to lead you and guide you, then you must, you must have a plan on paper. God will correct you if you have something to correct. Don't be afraid to commit yourself to paper. Because the Bible says, the heart of a man makes the plans.